John Ritz. Right. When I'm feeling hungry in the morning, I just really need something hearty. A breakfast that really will start the day off right. Like sunshine pancakes. award-winning staff writer, commentator, equine enthusiast, and ladies man. Reporting live from the scene of a massive nuclear explosion that has ripped through the peaceful, idyllic downtown Louisville scene. Everywhere around me there are bodies and broken glass. There seem to be looters attacking the dead bodies, and as unbelievable as it may seem, some of these fiends seem to actually be chewing on the remains of the people who were unfortunate to be caught in the initial blast. Now to get a better look at the carnage, I am entering the University of Louisville Moore Observatory. I am now standing in a large semicircular pitch black, except for an oblong split in the ceiling room. Through this opening I can see a sprinkling of stars that cast a frost, frosty glow over the intricate mechanism of the huge telescope. Though, through the telescope, I am looking very far away indeed, glistening in the blood-red nuclear firelight, I can see the Louisville Symphony, standing on the side of the road, turning their in, tuning their instruments groggily, and for some reason completely nude. It seems that this explosion has caught even the arts community completely by surprise. The tickling sound, tickling sound you hear is the clicking of the clockwork apparatus of the telescope as it focuses on the red-hot core of this catastrophe, namely the glowing remains of the Louisville nuclear power plant. There are also massive residual explosions going on in the background as it seems that this chaos of, of this horrible night is far from over. With me here is Professor Christoph Volek, a, a faculty member at the, here at the University of Louisville, and uh, he was here and observed the explosion as it occurred. Professor, would you please explain to our radio audience and those listening abroad what you saw as you peered through your telescope this evening? Great! Uh, I'm not sure where you're going with that, Professor. Are you saying that it was something that was wrong maybe with the brains of the workers of the nuclear power plant that caused this evening's mayhem? You're doing the world of academia proud this evening, Professor. Uh, do you have anything else to add? All right, well, isn't that always the way it goes? Uh, I think what the pres Professor is trying to express is that we are all, of all of us, wild beasts at heart, and that's what we've got to be. Truthfully, that's what drew me to interview you, Professor. You see, all these little office workers that until tonight worked downtown, they're no good in a crisis. They're always running off to work. I see them, hundreds of them every day, ru running wild to catch the TARP bus for fear that they'll be a bit late, running back home after a miserable day at work in time for dinner. Lives insured and a little invested in case of accidents, this new order of things will be a godsend for these people. Nice roomy cages, good food, careful breeding, no worries. After a week of so of chasing around the fields on empty stomachs, they'll be glad to be caught. It'll be all the contentment their brains can handle. Brains? Yes, Professor, I said brains. <laughs> ah, the professor's trying to beg me. Ah, Linda, back to you. Hey, Mr. Phillips, Mr. Hooks, unfortunately, 
Apparently, we have lost the connection with them. Well, another breaking news. Breaking news. We have a special announcement from our Oval Office. Good afternoon. Is this Miss Mrs. President? <laughs> no, I am not the Mrs. President. Um, Vice President? No, I am not the Vice President. We are the Secretary of Ways and Measurements. Oh. <laughs> well, tell us. Well, we are eager to hear your announcement. As I sit down these notes on paper, I am upset by the thought that I may be the last living woman in the capital. <laughs> Citizens of the nation, I shall not try to conceal the gravity of the situation that confronts the country, nor the concern of your government in protecting the life and property of its people. However, I wish to impress upon you, private citizens and public officials, all of you, the urgent need of calm and resourceful action. Fortunately, this formidable enemy is still confined to a comparatively small Louisville area, and we may place our faith in the military forces to keep them there. In the meantime, placing our faith in God, we must continue the performance of our duties, each and every one of us, so that we may confront this destructive adversary with a nation united, courageous, and consecrated to the preservation of the human supremacy on this earth. I thank you all. You have just heard the secretary of weight and measurement. <laughs> now, we have to announce this, but we are informed that the central portion of Louisville is blocked up from radio communication due to the effect of the heat ray up on power lines and the electrical equipment. Now that I have to relocate myself, because the windows, one of the other windows are broken down. of course, about Humana. Whee! Humana Life Insurance. Because you never know when some crazy zombies are going to take over your town and try to eat your brain. You're saying we are. 